Coming up, Universal Orlando has released new details about Minion Land coming to Universal Studios Florida this summer. So we're going to break that all down on this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host and number one banana fanatic, Craig Williams. And today I'm joined alongside by my co-host and what you would also call one of my minions, Rhino. I would also argue a bigger banana fanatic, but that's just me. <laughs> uh, two different types of bananas, <laughs> if we really want to get into it. And we're yes, not I'm going a, I like to. a banana bread. You like the fruit off the tree. I like them frozen, (laughs) but I don't know if that makes my case any better here. Uh, Welcome to this week's episode of the Unplugged Universal Edition. Uh, Like I said, we are going to be talking about the new Minion Land that is opening up this summer at Universal Studios Florida. And I know the first thing you want to know is what date is it actually opening? I can't help you there because they didn't tell us it is still this summer. But we are going to talk about everything that is involved with it because you know we knew about the uh, upcoming attraction the villain con Min- minion blast as well as the minion cafe and the fact that this was going to be part of a larger illumination avenue but it's actually more than that uh, there's there's going to be a couple little extras thrown in here and i, I think it's very exciting it's going to completely transform the entrance of that park so We will get to that in a second. Before we do, I have to remind you, it's brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. And by it, I mean this show. Uh, If you (laughs) like our content and you want to support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and you get the support of one of the awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free no obligation quote. Okay, Rhino, how excited are you for this Minion Land? Pumped? Yeah, I would say fairly. Oh, <laughs> wow. Oh, what a glowing recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, honestly, though, it's hard to get too excited for it until it's fully open. Uh, I am definitely looking at everything that's going to be part of it and saying, OK, this is going to be great. Uh, this is exactly what Universal Orlando needs uh, and not just what it needs uh, in terms of like to keep it fresh and fun, but also they are checking off a huge demographic with more family friendly entertainment because that's what everything in this area is just screaming to me. And well, it also helps that they say it's going to be fun for the whole family too. So, you know, we can take that into consideration. Uh, The one thing I want to, I have a big question about is what it's going to look like now, as soon as you walk into Universal Studios, Florida, because, you know, we know you come into the park and directly in front of you, you have the Universal Studios store on your left. You have to get Today Cafe on your right. And then you have Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, just a little further up. You have uh, the Villain Con Minion Blast that will be right there on the corner, on the opposite corner as well too but is that going to change like uh, because universal said in their press release that the entrance to minion land will be marked with a photo worthy minion land marquee featuring 22 minions so like Mm. do we think that's going to be placed right there or in a different area because that that might be a little off-putting to like walk in and all of a sudden you're in it On, on on top of the fact that you know that first entrance area of the park is usually used pretty heavily for a Halloween Horror Night scare zone. So if you start adding Minion Land uh, decorations in there, I'm not sure how that will mess everything up. Maybe this goes away as a scare zone area because of all the changes that are happening to it. Do you have any speculation on that, Rhino? I know it's not a lot to work with. We don't have a photo of that marquee and sign. So uh, unless someone else has talked about where that's going, I, I've completely missed it. But uh, it will, it'll definitely look different having it be like all minions all in your face right as soon as you get in there. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, um, I just, I think... Um 
Yeah, I I don't know. That's it, it like Halloween Horror Nights. That would be super off putting. That's the thing, you know, right? Um, and so I don't know. Maybe they cover it up. Maybe, but I I don't. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. I, all I could imagine is like an archway that's minions that have created like a balloon arch. <laughs> but like in my mind, I'm sure that's not what it is. But that's what I like when Raymond Holt builds the balloon arch in uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. She's glorious. She's magnificent. <laughs> well, I, you know, I hope for our sake that it's not quite like that. It's a little bit more intricate, but we will just have to wait and see. Uh, I'm going to repeat now for the third time, I believe, that we already know about Villain Con Minion Blast, uh, the main attraction that is being added to this area to go alongside Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. It has been there since uh, 2012, 2011, 2012-ish. Uh, I don't remember the exact year. It doesn't really matter. You'll have two attractions there. Uh, we knew about Minion Cafe because that was in the initial announcement of it. But then we got confirmation on what else is coming to that area. And it's actually... a pretty exciting uh they will also have bake my day which a lot of people who have <laughs> gone to the parks recently have noticed in this area there's been a giant cupcake added on top of the uh, general area where minion cafe is and so yeah bake my day a little a little bakery we'll get a little bit more into it there uh papa nana freeze ray pops and then the illumination theater are going to round out oh my what God. is new as part of this announcement Yes, you I just, just realized, realized a pun of something. <laughs> no, yeah, the Papa Nana, like a banana pop in my head when I read the thing earlier, I was like, Papa Nana, is it going to be like a whack-a-mole, but you're hitting Nana? Like you're like, yes. I was thinking it was Groot's mom and it's like a whack-a-mole we were hitting his mom. <laughs> that was that the Papa Nana makes way more sense than now yeah. that I'm thinking about it. I, it absolutely does. And Rhino, should we talk about what the general layout of the area should be or should we jump into Minion Cafe and our first look at the menu and then talk about all of that later once we go over what everything is? Then we can talk about where it should be. I'm going to let you decide on this one. I say layout and then food. Layout okay. and then food. I'll be too hungry okay. otherwise. That's that's perfect. So uh how it's going to look and i'm just using the concept art as my guide for this uh, and i feel like it's pretty much spot on it's really easy to figure out but uh, as we've said you know as you walk into universal studios florida you would have despicable me minion mayhem on your left you will have villain con minion blast on your right and the attractions will just be you know that nice kind of like hallway as you're making your way deeper into Illumination Avenue and Minion Land. So uh, the Evil Stuff store is going to be added as part of Villain Con Minion Blast so that we'll have lots of goodies with the vin the villains of the Despicable Me and Minion Universe and such. So, you know, leave an attraction, buy all your stuff. You're definitely going to want that. So what I'm going to start with this discussion is, is basically if you're kind of past the two attraction buildings and you're looking at where Monsters Cafe would have been before, which is now going to be the home of Minion Cafe. But uh, the, the first place we'll start with it is if you remember where the Shrek and Donkey meet and greet was going to be not was going to be, where it was for years and years right across the way from Shrek 4D, uh, that is going to be exactly where the Illumination Theater is based on the concept art. And the Illumination Theater is going to be the place where you meet and interact with minions, Gru, Margo, Edith, Agnes, plus characters from Sing, including Rosita, Gunter, and Johnny. And also all around this area, they're saying that there will be uh, murals, photo ops and other like representation of different characters in the entire universe of Illumination. And so, yeah, the Illumination Theater, that's going to be right, right there where the Shrek and Donkey meet and greet was for years and years and years. And right on that corner. To the left of the Illumination Theater is where Bake My Day is going to be. And uh, it's not hard to find because that's going to be the building with the giant cupcake on top of it. And it'll be like, you know, once you get past the attractions, it's right there. You won't be able to miss it. 
Uh, directly to the left of Bake My Day, connected in the same building, is where freeze ray pops are going to be. And, you know, it's going to be a great way to cool off in the hot Florida heat. These are colorful popsicles that will be inspired by Gru, the Minions, and Vector. And apparently they will also have drinks available at the little stand. So as we're moving down... Wait, adult past, drinks? Okay, sorry. Or Sorry, yeah, adult drinks or no family probably. drinks? No, uh, family drinks. I'm I'm assuming slushies, like a banana okay. flavored slushy. What you would probably stuff you would expect similar to uh, to super silly fun land out in Hollywood. Rhino, I know you want to get drunk in Minion Land, <laughs> but With let Vector. the kids have something. Let the kids Come have. On. They're not pajamas. <laughs> Okay, uh, so to the left of Freeze Ray Pops uh, is going to be the quick service window as part of Minion Cafe. Not, It's not a quick service window, an express window, I should say, that's going to serve a limited menu. And we'll get a little bit more into that as we talk about Minion Cafe. But Minion Cafe is plopped right in the same spot where the Classic Monster Cafe was before for years and years and years. And if you're wondering where the the stand is where you get to beat your Nana, uh, Papa Nana, that is uh, going to be in the exact location and spot where they previously had the uh, the little drink kiosk that was right outside of Classic Monsters Cafe. You know, the ones where where Frankenstein and Wolfie and the creature were spinning for years and years and years. That's where you're going to find Pop Anana. And that, at least for now, is the general outlet and overlay of what we should expect from Minion Land. And obviously more can happen in the future, but based on what they've already released and talked about, that's what, that's what we should expect from it. And I think that sounds pretty good. It's a nice little cohesive area. I mean, yeah, Rip Ride Rockets just right across the way, kind of mm. standing out looking weird, as well as the 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 music plaza and the stage. And then, you know, it's it's a little too close to comfort for Jimmy Fallon. But overall, <laughs> seems like a, a good start to me, at least. Yeah, I, I mean, I. I, I honestly I like um, in the concept art, like I like that pop of color that the, it, it kind of gives the whole the whole area over there. I'll make it look like fresh and new. And I don't know. I, I think uh, I think it's going to be exciting. Yep, it should be. And you know what? I worked so hard to put in a terrible innuendo that I didn't mean to make when I was talking about Papa Nana that uh, I realized I didn't actually say what Papa Nana will be selling. And that is banana flavored popcorn inspired by the Minions. Uh, and uh. they will be selling cute popcorn buckets like the Minion selfie bucket. It's going to be savory. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be Papa Nana. I, hey, pop a, that makes way more sense. But guess what? It sounds disgusting. <laughs> Banana yeah. popcorn? No, ma'am. Uh, I'll try it once. I'll probably love it because I, as much as I have an affinity for bananas, I love even more that artificial banana flavor. Like, especially like oh. with banana popsicles growing up. Uh, I, I just, I, I like it. I like it more than the taste of actual bananas. I might be weird, but it's just me. It's who I am. You loved, did you, you, did you like always like, was it Runtz that always had the, the banana pieces? Mm. It was all the different fruits, right? And then Runtz. Yeah, said, yeah. See, I avoided the banana of that and the banana popsicle at all costs. Well, you're dead to me now. That's all that matters. <laughs> but okay. Uh, so I think that kind what? of does a good job of talking about everything that's in the Illumination Avenue, Minion Land area. The one last thing I do want to mention with it, too, is we don't have any new information on Villain Con Minion Blast. So if you're expecting information on that, I'm sorry, we don't have anything for you. Uh, there will be new details coming at some point in the future, uh, hopefully soon, along with the opening date. But as of right now, we have nothing on that. But uh, the bulk of this announcement that Universal made was centered around Minion Cafe, because we're getting a, a better idea of what to expect from Minion Cafe. 
And as I said, uh, Minion Cafe is going to be kind of set up in two different ways. There's going to be the it's a it's a quick service restaurant. So you're going to have that uh, quick service dining option in different themed rooms. Uh, or you do have the option of going up to the express window where there will be a limited menu so you can grab your Minion themed inspired food and then be on your way. So I really like this idea that they're giving you two options. Uh, goodness knows that this restaurant's going to be very busy when it first opens up. So if you're one of those people who's like, I want a taste of what's probably one of the more popular things without necessarily dealing with the hassle of longer lines and you know finding a spot to sit, I'd rather just take my stuff and go. What what a what a good idea! Like I don't think it needs to be implemented everywhere at every mm -hmm. restaurant, but I I kind of I'm digging it for this. But we don't know what the menu is, so I can't say like for sure that oh this is a great thing. But on paper, in theory, it sounds cool to me. Oh yeah, for sure. I I I, I mean, I'm just excited for new food. <laughs> like the rest is all gravy to me, yeah. metaphorically. Maybe there's gravy, but I don't know. Well, uh, I don't know about said gravy, but we do have an idea of what some of the food options will be at Minion Cafe. Uh, we will get to that in a second, but I want to talk about the different themed areas inside the restaurant. And all of the uh, themed dining locations, of course, are inspired and designed after the beloved Minions, Kevin, Stewart, Bob, and Otto. Uh, the three different Rooms where you can eat at include the kitchen, which will showcase where the equipment and gear that the minions use to create the meals are. So, uh, yeah, you'll be you can dine in the kitchen. There will be the break room, which will allow guests to dine in the minions break space that includes lots of little details like a vending machine stocked with mischievous items. They mm. also mentioned something about like a safety tip board so i'm assuming it's uh probably something similar in design to the shirt that rhino's wearing <laughs> it uh, <laughs> is literally all about lab safety and such so i i have a feeling it's going to be very very similar to that if not kind of the exact well, same well we'll guess i know what shirt i'm wearing on when we go <laughs> i know which one i'm wearing too uh and then the final room you can eat at is the dining room which makes sense and this will be a vibrant space adorned with colorful artwork courtesy of the minions and more but that's actually not done those are just the interior theme spaces there's also going to be an outdoor patio which i know rhino and i definitely appreci appreciate a patio <laughs> possible times good i don't know how i was trying to uh shorten appreciate but uh we appreciate patio for sure we appreciate patio yeah i do i do i love a good patio so but i'll probably want to eat inside a little bit you know get get used to the restaurant and then start utilizing the patio for uh you know other dining options especially once you get to the uh, cooler times of the year where the patio might be even better but uh, in terms of the food the menu will have nearly 20 items inspired by characters and staples from the movies including eclectic despicables despicables mm. b-o-l-w-s despicables b-o-w-l-s did I just screw it's up fine. spelling bulls? Yeah, it's that word. Isn't that a how I met your mother joke where Ted's like, you ever say a word too many times that it doesn't feel real? Like bull. Yeah. Bull. Bull. Now, the harder part is when I'm literally reading it right off to the side and it's definitely spelled right in front of me. So apparently I have <laughs> no reading comprehension anymore. That's okay. Uh, the Look, bulls, mate. despicable bulls will include Otto's Noodle Bowl, Agnes's Honeymoon Soup, and Carl's Crispy Cauliflower. Ooh. And Rhino, did you see the pictures for these? No, I did not. Okay. Well, I can look it up right go now. Go ahead and uh, yeah, go over to uofan.com. You know, that of course is the website that is connected to the Disunplugged Universal Edition. And we have all the artwork that you'll be seeing throughout oh. this show on there. And uh, that includes the six food items that they described in there. There's, uh, they provided visuals of those as well. So, wait. What was so, this? What was the green one? 
The green one is Agnes's honeymoon soup. And that basically looks like it honestly looks like a pea soup or like an avocado soup with a is that a gummy bear in the middle and then oh, served no. alongside a grilled cheese waffle. Yeah, I bet it's like uh I mean it looks like it's like maybe those are chunks of bacon or pork belly and I bet that's like a tomato gummy bear. I want to know what the the dots are. Do you think that's oil or do you think that's like ice? Yeah, that's oil. <laughs> that's 100% oil. Not ice. I mean, I love a good I love a good waffle maker sandwich, so and and honestly the cute little the cute little noodle ball that it comes like all of this i'm in i'm in the cauliflower i'm pretty like mm. yeah well the good. otto's noodle bowl is especially fun because uh the way they show it in there the noodles are basically in the i believe that's otto's head and then you have your accoutrements all around. And that egg looks really good. Like oh, they, whoever cooked really that one did a good job. I know it's probably a prop one and stage, but they, you know, in this, uh, you know, they're going for that ramen style bowl here with yeah. some pork and and corn and the egg. And I'm assuming there will be a broth that you'll pour over once you lift up the noodles from that little bowl, but I like it. That shows some inventiveness and some ingenuity yeah. and the cauliflower. Honestly. Yeah. It doesn't look like the most incredible thing in the world. It just looks like fried cauliflower served with edamame, maybe some pickled vegetables and some blue, blue rice. Yeah. What the is blue this? rice Star is Wars? interesting. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, I love I love a good cauliflower and it looks like it comes with a side of a sweet chili sauce in there. And the, so right now this looks like a good, like a nice light, like, mm tasty hopefully it delivers on that but um yeah that looks really good did you talk about the ones underneath of this rounding out the other options that universal told us about includes the one and only handheld which is the steak and cheese ray sandwich now this isn't necessarily the one and only handheld it's just the one and only one that they bothered to you know highlight when they were talking about this menu and rhino i don't if you're looking at the picture oh i'm looking love at the it. fact that it doesn't come with french fries apparently it yeah. comes with a uh, fried zucchini that's curled up into twists but uh basically this bananas. looks like a fancy arby's uh beef and cheddar with uh an extra injection of cheese in there or some sort of uh sauce with it as well. So this feels like maybe another evolution of that uh that special sandwich that we had in the in the Seuss Landing area for Christmas that one time. Do you remember that was just like disgustingly oh, yeah. heavy and cheesy? Like feels like that's going for the same thing. Okay, look at this photo t closely too cuz I I mean it probably is real cheese, but because the the photo has uh you know everything's done very fun and kind of a little sloppy on purpose, you know, in that like but I I mean I love the color palettes and everything they've chose, but the cheese on the side is si like that's that's made it off the plate is sitting in a weird way where it like now I am convinced all the orange cheese in this is gack. Well, okay. it looks like either Gak or handprints. Like the minions left big, massive cheese handprints as they were pulling their hands away. Uh, it looks delicious. I'm not going to lie. I'm very hungry yeah. right now. Oh, uh, God, yeah. it, also on the menu, a, a dessert item they wanted to highlight, Bob's Teddy Bear Chocolate Cream Puff, which looks like the teddy That's bear cute. from the movie is a little little chocolate cream puff with the ears and the the face this thing just looks adorable and i'm sure it's delicious as long as there's a, you know plenty of good delicious cream inside that puff yuck what <laughs> nothing yum i look forward to it but uh, let, i look forward to hearing you not describing it anymore too well, uh, what i'm looking forward to is for minion land to stop having overly sexualized food in every way oh we'll just form. wait till our <laughs> next number here though <laughs> <laughs> well the final thing we're going to talk about is a kids menu item and this is mini bosses mega melt and it essentially looks like it is a waffle grilled cheese can't go wrong with that <laughs> with the <laughs> smallest <laughs> banana be banana. <laughs> <laughs> and then what looks to be like little minion uh minion maybe tater tots little potato bites uh, they're, yeah they're, i don't they're know like they those, look adorable they, though 
D- wow. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, I was like, they need to like sell those in a supermarket or something like that. Cause they're, they're cute. They remind me of like, I- I've had these in my life. Like the smiley face ones. Do you remember those? Yeah. They were like, yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, for French fries. And then, you know, they also give off that vibe of like dino nuggets, but like the yeah. next level, I would, if they like actually license this out and it was in grocery stores, it would probably oh, be I'd the that. exclusive uh, <laughs> choice for me. Uh, because sometimes when I'm buying groceries, I buy them like I'm a child and I well, just, like, you at least what's going to kill me. So. What's that? <laughs> I said, at least you have a child. I myself make it a point of habit to always have dinosaur chicken nuggets in my freezer. I have a whole box downstairs right now. Yeah, I hear here, Rhino. Hear here. So you just got to be classy. What? You it's be just classy. My mother raised me to be classy, and that's how you're classy. Dino chicken nuggets. You got that dino chicken nugget money? Um, I. You know what? I basically do plant based nuggets at this point. So we don't we don't really stock the dino nuggets. You know what bugs me about the plant based nuggets though? The plant based nuggets, they're shaped like regular animals and that defeats the whole purpose. I'm like, no, I don't I don't want to be doing that. Why would you make them all look like a dolphin and a a thing like I don't want I don't want vegan nuggets to look like the animal that I am trying not to eat, first of all. Second of all, why don't not just make them oh I think they do make dinosaur ones now too, but that's why I was like I couldn't do it. I was like, no, not eating your weird turkey. Rhino, I love that we just got to take this journey together. Uh, this was <laughs> uh, unexpected that we were going to go down this road of dino nuggets and such, but uh, I feel like it paid off for at least look one for our uh, look for our new spinoff podcast, Dino Nuggets and Me. <sighs> we're going to have to start and you know, me, turning not these in back. Me. Uh, we're <laughs> we're we're starting to release too many side podcasts, and the yeah. worst part is. We can never find where they're released. We record them all. We just don't know where they're going to. It's just like, where? It's not good at where the SEO. What's yeah. that? <laughs> just not good with the SEO. Yeah. Search. No, pretty terrible at it. But yeah, so that is everything with Minion Land in terms of the new details and Illumination Avenue. I am ready for this to already open up. I'm ready for it to take one step forward beyond that. And I'm ready for Illumination Avenue to uh, go a little bit deeper into the park. I'm ready to say goodbye to Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon and really incorporating Secret Life of Pets into this as Ooh, well. Oh, yeah, I, that would be fun. You know, I like the sing. I, I like sing. So I would rather, I, I think we, I, I would rather see that than other stuff because I think we talked like way back when about like, oh, you know, it'd be great if you could actually go to the parks and see those characters sing. And I still mm-hmm. want that to happen. I'm, I'm really excited about this. It definitely is going to change how Universal Studios Florida is as a park. Uh, It is stripping away even more of that history of being a real working studio. But honestly, it's about what people want to see. And uh, not only that, but, you know, it's not like with... So with... Basically, the monsters in general. I'm not going to talk about Shrek. We know Shrek was a huge loss for people. With monsters, you know, we're losing Monsters Cafe. We lost it, which was a great themed restaurant, just so beautiful on the inside. But every time I see a new construction update photo for Epic Universe in that monster section, Mm -hmm. like we lost it. So that way it could be even better in Epic Universe, and it's not even close to being finished, but you can already tell the next level that it's going, and we know that Shrek is going to live on in bigger and better ways than a 4D movie that was basically a bonus feature on a DVD, (laughs) so I love the direction that it's all going in. Yes, it is stripping away more of that original side of Universal Studios Florida, but it really is, it's it's the minions aren't losing relevancy anytime soon. So it's just going to make, it's going to make the park uh, more friendly to, to more people out there. So I'm all for it. Can't wait. Yeah. I, I, I look forward to it. I mean, for me, universal is all about the movies and it seems like where the, 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 what, the way they've done their theming over the last couple of years with like the additions of Harry Potter and, and um, what I saw at like Super Nintendo World and, and uh, Hollywood and, um, you know, what we've seen so far with Epic Universe. Like I, I'm, I don't want any of the, the parks to fall behind any of the, you know, especially studios in terms of like, you look at how Islands of Adventure is themed, like I'm ready for them to really embrace that, like really next level theming at 
uh, studios a little bit more than, I mean, they've got Diagon Alley, which is great, but I, I want like even more of it. So I'm yeah. excited. I, I'm not sure if that's what Minion Land is going to be necessarily. I, I am still concerned that it's going to feel a little bit cheap in areas. I'm not going to, mm. you know, I'm not going to try to stay away from that. Uh, there are, there are some aspects of it that could scream this is on the cheap side. However, I also look at Super Silly Funland out in Universal Studios Hollywood. I love that area. I know that also does kind of have a cheap feel to it in a way, but it's it still makes me happy when I'm like looking around that that entire land. So, it doesn't I guess it doesn't have to be, you know, the the it doesn't have to be on the level of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but it is definitely a step in a in a different direction, in the right direction. So uh, I, yeah, I, I, they, they have very little, in my opinion, that they can screw up with this. Really, it comes down to will the will the food not be that great? Will Villain Con Minion Blast just be an absolute waste of time? If those things prove true, then. Then we're stuck with this for a long time, a subpar land for who knows how long. But if they nail this all, then it's going to it's going to really revitalize this park and give it another new uh, breath of fresh air, which Mm -hmm. that's great. It's great for it's great for the original park. It shouldn't get left behind as new things are in the future. I agree. Okay. Well, Rhino, I think with that, we are going to wrap up this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me about Minion Land and Illumination Avenue. I, I enjoyed well, it. I hope you did, too. Yes, I'm going to go have a banana for lunch now. <laughs> <laughs> you probably want to eat a, something a little bit more substantial than that. But if that's your choice, then uh, feel free to roll with it. But thank you to everyone else out there who watched and listened to this episode. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, seriously, thank you for taking the time to support us. And if you want to support us more, book a trip through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, questions, video suggestions in the comments section. If you listen to this, please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a rating and review when possible. But that's it for this week's episode of the Disunplugged Universal Edition. We are going to go and grab a big bushel of bananas. <laughs> I don't know why I went back to the bananas. I should have just ended this. I had a chance. I'm going to end this now. Uh, that's it for this week's episode. We'll see you again real soon with another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Remember, we still haven't changed the name. Bye.